We continued with our protagonist selling his items at the auction, and it seems that someone had just bought that dagger of the Silent Knight that he had recently shown us. The guy from before was precisely the one responsible for being able to buy that dagger, and even he couldn't believe that his reputation turned out to be more important than a treasure, thinking it was total theft on the boy's part. Even the Divine Lady began to wonder where the protagonist had got it from, as he had even managed to sell a pile of worthless items for a huge price. Finally, they were going to start advertising the second item, called the Storm Cloak, which even increased attack speed by 1%. He wondered why the ratings of the items were getting lower as they were announced, and that cloak seemed to be quite ordinary even, and began to wonder again what hidden attribute this cloak possessed. The proto got straight to the point, and the hidden attribute of this item is that it is possible to see spirits while wearing it for up to 10 seconds every 3 hours, and with the help of this, the survival rate within the dangerous world of shadows can increase by a certain amount, asking if everyone could guess the value of this and the importance of this item. The initial bids on this cloak would start at 1 million, and people went wild, because this item was perfect for a swordsman, and the bids were already at 3 million in a matter of seconds, until this lady bid 15 million, making people recognize that they had no way of competing with this lady. That young lady from before who was saved by the protagonist twice thought it was totally absurd, as a C-ranked item was being sold for the value of an S-ranked one, and it seems that the lady was the one who got that cloak. As the lady was the owner of the cloak, this young man next to the red-haired one commented that not only could the boy trust the divine lady, but he could also raise the prices of useless street items to an insane price, and he was definitely winning at life with that auction. In the mind of the man in red who had been cheated, it seemed that his guild still didn't have such a high ranking, but they still had enough money to be able to sabotage a country, and he swore that he wouldn't give the protagonist another chance to profit from them, saying that he wouldn't bid again from now on. The one who showed up again later was the boy from before, who commented that this was a total waste of time and was thankful that the auction hadn't ended yet. As everyone there knew, when an awakened person reached level 20, they could choose their own class, and when level 50 was reached, they could also level up to a mid-level class, and the third item they were going to announce that day also had to do with class advancement. This was a crystal skull. According to the boy's descriptions, this item was something of a substitute for the Holy Grail of Strength, a rare A-ranked item needed for level 50 warriors to advance to mid-level warriors, and the starting bid would be just shy of 5 million. Once again the bids began to rise one after the other, and this young lady said that with this, they would end up being able to take care of a powerful mid-level warrior, and even she didn't resist this time and decided to bid 10 million, and it seems that even the guy from before couldn't take it anymore, thus increasing the bids to 15 million. The situation between these two seems to be personal, and the bids continued at 18 million, 20 million, 23 million, 25 million, until the boy from before decided to end the game and bid 35 million. This took them both by surprise, and some wondered when the boy had come back, since he had recently left, and it seems that the boy really didn't want to miss out on such an opportunity. In the end, they managed to sell the item for 35 million to the boy, but before the proto could give the final word, the young woman who was accompanying the lady who was saved by the proto asked what they were going to do, and if they were going to raise the bids even higher. But it seemed that it wasn't worth it if the value was over 30 million, and they would wait for the next items to be bid on, and this time, yes, the boy ended up with that crystal skull. The long-awaited final came, and the fourth and fifth items were to be sold together. Again, this guy said to himself that if he bid one more time, he was just a dog and wouldn't bid on the boy's items, even if he had a god-level item, while another said that the protagonist would probably sell the two pieces together so that he could raise even more, thus revealing his true intentions. This was a magic spirit ring, and it looks like an ordinary item, but here it already said what secret attribute it had, and it was an intermediate level instant magic that could be used once every 30 days. This second item was a potion of ice flame, and the secret attribute it had was that, if mixed with a drop of magic revitalization compound, it could instantly recover mana to maximum again. The Divine Lady said that that magic ring was a treasure that could be used by mages below level 80, and with it, they could cast spells instantly, and in fact it was a cheat item for the mages themselves. Currently, there didn't seem to be any other potion on the market that could instantly replenish their mana to the maximum limit, and no doubt that potion was also a very rare treasure for mages, and the starting bids would start at around 10 million, 
and this was their last chance, so it was good to think wisely. The guy, who previously thought he'd be a dog if he bit again, even changed his appearance after seeing these items, and bid 20 million. The lady put in 30 million, the boy 40 million, and because the price was going up by 10 million with each bid, they didn't even stand a chance of being able to try to get that item, and the people in the big guilds were really rich. Now the bids were at 45 million, 50 million, 60 million, and it seemed that the dog from before didn't have much choice, since after buying the Dagger of the Silent Knight his budget was limited, something like 60 million for him to really spend, and he could no longer be a dog who kept bidding on the protagonist's products. With that, the boy gave up bidding, and the prota asked if anyone else intended to bid, and the lady was beginning to be happy to win those two items. Just as the protagonist was about to bang the gavel, that young lady spoke up, which caught the lady's attention, and she bid 75 million for that item, and she was part of a guild called Ark, the number one guild in the world. The lady acknowledged defeat after such a high bid, and in the end she got the item, telling herself that the guild leader would probably end up liking those two items a lot, even thanking God that she had managed to win the bids. The prota then thanked the people who had taken part, ending the auction of items from the Luo goddess once and for all, and as the boy was leaving, suddenly a hologram began to form, which was precisely the demon from before, which caught the protagonist's attention, and it seems that he had gone to take part in the auction too. People couldn't believe that the number one hero had gone to take part in the auction too, even if holographically speaking, and this young woman wondered why the leader of her guild was there, but in the protagonist's thoughts, he remembered the insect's true personality, and even despaired, as he still didn't have enough power to fight it if anything happened. So, what the boy said was that he hoped their savior would take part in the second session of the auction of Goddess Luo's personal items next time, but for himself, he tried to calm down, saying that he couldn't let that monster sense his intentions. When he looked at the young man, he decided to ask the boy something and asked if they had by any chance met before, but it was clear that the boy's answer would be no. However, the disposable man from before managed to realize that the boy was lying, and said that he remembered everything that had happened in the city of dark ruins. The boy even tried to disguise it, and with a psychotic smile, the most powerful guy ended up making the people in that place feel enormous pressure, and a kind of storm began to form right over where the auction was taking place. Out of this storm came the worst hero of all time, saying that everything would be obliterated, and he immediately set off in the boy's direction to finish him off. With his speed alone, he was able to wreak enormous havoc on the place, even collapsing the whole place, without even thinking about the victims who would be there. From the rubble, the protagonist appeared totally finished off, and it seems that the guy from before wasn't happy about that either, and activated his leisure ray ability with his eyes. However, the boy managed to dodge, but it was a fact that it wouldn't end there, and it even seemed that the scum were enjoying chasing the protagonist. With just one blow, he was able to make the boy go from bad to worse, until he had finally woken up from his nightmare. It had been three days since the auction, but he was still having this terrible nightmare, and in fact, what had really happened was that the hero had wanted to thank the boy for saving his companions when he was in the city of ice and fire, saying that he had high hopes for the protagonist, and apart from the fact that the auction had been a success, Austin hadn't noticed anything and hadn't attacked as he had dreamed. What's more, the protagonist hadn't been able to bid for the item he wanted without anyone noticing, and apart from that suitcase, we see that he had gotten one S-ranked item and one A-ranked item. It seems that the duplicating crystal also had another secret ability, and it was extremely useful, as it was also an item that could duplicate an S-ranked item used by an awakened once. He was currently at level 30, and it was time to say goodbye to all those basic secondary skills, and it was time to enter a new world by changing class. Austin was extremely strong, and to deal with a monster that wanted to become god and to protect his companions, he needed to get stronger as quickly as possible, and the young mage sent him a message saying that she had just received the item he had sent her. She hadn't expected him to be so generous, thanking him for it, and that ring increased magical power by 7%, and the hidden ability of that item was that it was able to cast medium-level magic instantly 20 times. The boy said that she didn't need to thank him, as he had already deducted the value of the item from her account with an additional work fee, which caused her to call the protagonist all sorts of names you can think of, as the boy had hacked her account in order to buy that item. As for the army guy from before, equipping an axe would increase his attack power by 15%, 
and he said that the protagonist was treating him just like those who wanted to sell him supplies. As for the boy who controlled the wolf, this item would allow his clone to enter a state of extreme frenzy, and he even wondered if he would end up destroying the world if he used this item. For the young maid, this item was a silencer for the weapons she used, and had an additional poison effect, thus causing extra damage to the giant creatures. Although she had received the item, she told the protagonist never to send her anything again, and suddenly a person appeared saying that Headmistress Anya was downstairs, asking the protagonist to follow her, as she didn't like waiting for people. However, what he asked was that this young woman not approach him. Otherwise, when he became her principal's husband, the first thing he would do would be to fire this young woman, which caused her to remain silent about what the boy had said. In the car itself, Anya asked why he had taken so long, and according to him, it was usually other people who waited for her, so he thought she should try her own medicine, but she still wanted to thank him for helping her this time. She was only helping him in return for saving her in the city of fire and ice, and to return the favor of the first-rate treasure he had also gifted her, which had a lightning effect. As long as she liked it, that was the most important thing, but he wondered if this item was still considered a first-rate item when he had only modified a few things on it. But continuing their conversation, it seems that this was the reason she was doing him this favor, but when all this was over, they would no longer have any debt to each other. He even called this young lady cold, but she kept saying that they weren't familiar with each other, so he could stop acting like they were old friends, and let's just say that the protagonist ended up guessing the color of the clothes she was wearing, which left this young woman totally embarrassed, not even knowing how to respond to this provocation. Still, she even commented to herself that perhaps that bastard really was the most trustworthy person in that dangerous world and they had changed cars for a helicopter, and this young woman couldn't believe that he was able to get her boss to spend so much money like that, wondering what he really wanted and why he wanted it. She also couldn't believe that her boss treated the boy so well, wondering if she was really planning to marry him. As he realized that this young secretary was curious, he decided to reveal the reason why he was there, and it was precisely to be able to complete an important task, and as soon as they looked outside, it seemed that they had finally reached their ultimate goal. When they landed, they could see several workers already working there, and after digging day and night, they had finally managed to dig to the bottom. The young woman from before asked him if he was really sure that this place was what he was looking for, as President Anya had really spent a lot of money on it. But for now we are left without the protagonist's answer. The only thing he did was activate that magic cube he had won a few chapters ago, thus showing a map again, and it seems he even managed to find a dark portal. With that, this young secretary couldn't believe that there was a portal to the shadow world right there and as he jumped into the portal, he said that some of the higher level shadow portals only appeared in special places, and she didn't need to follow him, because he would be back soon. It seemed that Anya was actually beginning to show a little concern for the protagonist, asking him to be careful, but only in her thoughts so as not to arouse suspicion. This was a dark A-class world, and when the boy was facing this tower, this suspicious wizard started talking to the boy, asking why he was there. Besides him, this other one also suddenly appeared, asking the boy to get straight to the point by showing his true intentions in that place, and he said that he was obviously there because it was the only shadow world where you can acquire occult classes. It seems that their shadow world also had an 85% mortality rate for ambitious humans driven by greed, and the one in white told the reckless boy to see for himself the hidden classes that were available. There was one that was hidden, and the other two that appeared were Elemental Sovereign and Master of Chaos, and he chose the one that was classless, causing the other two not to believe what they had just heard. It seems that this class didn't have any extra information for the time being, and the one in white said that the trial for that class was the hardest in the Tower of the Sage, and if the boy failed, he would surely end up being completely obliterated. He knew this and only asked them to start the test straight away, and since he had put it that way then, once he had passed through that door, the boy's trial would begin, thus wishing him good luck. We discovered at that moment that of the thousands of people who had gone to challenge the classless one in the past, only one had managed to pass with an S-ranked item, even though they might have been witnessing something they hadn't even counted on, but the one in black thought the boy would end up being missed without a doubt. If he didn't die on the first level, he said he would be the protagonist's servant for the rest of his life, and we saw the boy enter the challenge itself without a second thought. In the arena of the sky, the test of strength 15 was about to begin, 
and the challenger was asked to prepare for what was to come, and we see that the first creature in front of the boy was this mysterious being, which seemed to be some kind of goblin or orc. The boy was ready, and he needed to defeat this unstoppable cyclops, who immediately started attacking the protagonist without a second thought, but the boy managed to dodge at first, but the attacks didn't stop there, and it seems that the boy was having to make do in 30 in order to do well. We see that the two mages from before were watching the situation from the sidelines, and it seems that the one in black was really enjoying himself, and even said that the young man was just digging his own grave, since he was using a tactic that was simply ridiculous in order to pass that test. Returning to the Cyclops itself, the boy decided to attack this time, hitting the Cyclops exactly in the eye, but it seemed to have some kind of protection that prevented the boy's attack from continuing, which gave the creature enough time to counterattack. It was only at this point that I understood what had happened, and it seems that the protagonist had created a kind of layer of ice in front of the Cyclops' eye, and with his sight recovered, the boy was now behind him, but that certainly wasn't something to worry this omnipotent creature. The protagonist activated a different ability this time, and it seems that this ended up hindering the Cyclops' movement, which turned out to be exactly the opportunity the boy was looking for, and for the first time he managed to be able to throw the creature away, causing it to fall out of the arena, and thus successfully completing this initial challenge. The portal to the next level of the test of strength was opened, and it seems that the one in white was surprised by what the protagonist had managed to do. The one in black, on the other hand, was trying to disguise it, since it was he who had said that he would be the boy's slave for the rest of his life if he passed the first level, giving the excuse that he would only be the boy's servant for an hour, and if he passed the second level, then he would be the prota's servant for life. Although he managed to pass the first level by sheer luck, in the following levels only real strength could truly help him, and finally, the next level was about to begin. It seemed that this test the protagonist was going to take now was more to do with speed, and what he needed to do here was to race against the Sylph Wind Spirit and win. What's more, while he was racing against this spirit, several strong tornadoes would be produced when the Sylph raced, and when the challenger fell off the path of the race, he would fall into a cursed hell. The Wind Spirit could reach the speed of sound in just 5 seconds, and every 10 seconds her speed increased by 5%, not to mention that the boy was an awakened one with no profession yet. In other words, even if he was a top-level assassin with all the agility attributes, he still couldn't beat that sylph, but that was only what the black one thought, and it wasn't long before we saw the protagonist immediately preparing to run. It seems that this wind spirit thought the protagonist's attitude towards her was simply ridiculous, but it would still be a glorious moment in his life, so he should remember it forever. When the challenge began, the protagonist made a totally unexpected move, which left the two from before totally surprised, and it seems that the protagonist ended up attacking the sylph who was only really intending to run, not believing that the boy was really capable of doing it, and even the black wizard from before thought it was a complete cheat. As they hadn't established this rule previously, the boy ended up coming out of this as innocent, as they should have specified that he couldn't end Sylph's life, and for this reason it was considered as if it wasn't cheating on the young Prota's part. As he was the only participant in the race, he didn't even have to run, and walked calmly to the finish line, but as he remembered that he needed to get back quickly, he even sped up, but regardless of the boy's speed, he would be the winner in the end, and ultimately the speed test was also completed successfully. The gate to the next test was activated, and the black magician didn't think that was fair, swearing that the boy wouldn't pass the third test either, and if he was still able to do so, the black magician would be his servant for three lifetimes. This would be the test of wisdom, and we see this cube that was right on top of a giant pool of lava, and inside the cube itself was Lu Feng, and it seems that the requirement of this test was to solve some kind of relatively difficult puzzle in less than 15 minutes, and manage to escape from the cube that would be devoured by the lava. In simple terms, each puzzle he had to solve couldn't be more than 2 minutes long, and according to them, the high-level cube needed at least 6 minutes and at least 3,000 times to be executed, and the 7 chain was a death trap, plus it was highly necessary to concentrate when handling it, but I have no idea what that actually is. Even so, if the boy failed, there would end up being a huge explosion, which could even destroy an entire city with millions of people, and he had said that this was a test that totally exceeded human limits. Apart from the high-level awakened one with the profession of solving mysteries, all the others ended up becoming just memories, but it seems that the one in white still had hoped that the protagonist might be able to handle that test, 
but the one in black kept hoping against it. Suddenly, that hourglass started spinning, until it finally started working, thus starting the boy's test again. Lu Feng was quite calm from what he implied, and it seems that he had chosen a death trap right from the start, and we see the boy making some kind of move with this puzzle, and although the one in black was finding the boy reckless, the one in white seems to have been wrong about the protagonist, and he really was an airhead when it came to operating two things at once. However, when only 46 seconds had passed, he had managed to solve both puzzles at the same time, and the others were also solved one after the other, until we see both of them impressed by the young boy's exploits. And within 10 minutes, all the puzzles had been successfully completed. With no skill whatsoever, just his hands and his mind, the boy was able to pass, not to mention that this was the best result in history so far, and the test of wisdom was successfully completed. He had practiced these things many times, not least because he had spent 3,000 years in the same world of shadows, so he could solve it with his eyes closed, and the one in white asked if the one in black really intended to bet on the next test, and it was a fact that he did, saying that if the boy passed he would turn into a dog. Once again, the challenge was successfully completed, and the guy from before really had turned into a dog, who even couldn't believe what he had seen, because this test was supposed to last 7 days, but he was able to complete it in just 24 hours. It seems that the reason for this was that the boy had discovered the truth of that world, and the ground was sky, so he simply destroyed the ground, letting the light in and thus purifying the whole world, and the one in white told the one in black to give up once and for all, but he refused to do so and even said that if the boy didn't become memories in this last test, then he would never change again. We see them entering this other portal, and it seems that this was where the boy's last test would take place, and that would be the test of the senses, but it seems that the young man was more than prepared to be able to really deal with it. The requirement for this test was precisely to defeat all the professions of the shadow world. And we see several shadows in the shape of people, each with a different profession, and right after the test begins, we see the boy running away, but it was clear that this was all part of his strategy. A single man against a herd of all kinds of classes, surely running away was the best option, but running away would only lead to him being erased from history sooner or later, but going back to the protagonist, we see that the people running madly after him ended up losing sight of the boy, but others thought he must be very close. Suddenly, this one stepped on a landmine placed by the boy at some point, thus causing a huge explosion, and this other one gave the command for everyone to stand guard, and suddenly they spotted something falling in front of them, and this device activated a huge electrical discharge in everyone who was there, wiping out a few more professions easily. From the side of these professions, I understood absolutely nothing of what had happened here, but suddenly they too ended up becoming memories, and the one in black wondered how the boy had managed to get into the tower with so much equipment like that, and he had probably gone prepared for real, and it was more as if he already knew how to get through the trial in advance. When they least expected it, the boy ended up falling from the sky like water, wiping out those in front of him with enormous ease, and although the others could see the proto now, I would say that they would definitely be unable to deal with him. The one in black couldn't believe what he was witnessing, but he still thought that the protagonist had run out of tricks and was just prey to be hunted, and we see the boy running away again, and when he looked to see the situation, he said something to the effect that when it came to hunting, the real predator sometimes had to pretend to be the prey. Again, this dark wizard was thinking that it would be the end for the protagonist, as he had run to the top of the mountain only to be surrounded and thus erased from history, but although he really thought so, we see that a huge explosion suddenly happened, which caused several people to be erased from history as a result. The surprise on the black man's face was simply priceless, as suddenly blowing up an entire mountain was something totally out of the ordinary, but there were still 30% of the professions left to be erased from history, but everyone was retreating, preparing themselves so that they could wait for the right moment to attack. But according to the one in white, it was too late for them to make a Rayal comeback, and we see this suspicious guy in a different place, until the protagonist appeared, recognizing that this was indeed the master of the game, saying that that level was a perception level, and it was about finding the real person who was pulling the strings and putting an end to them. Desperate, this guy started making excuses saying it wasn't him, 
But that didn't matter to the boy, and he was going to be erased from history for good or ill, and with that the protagonist managed to complete another test successfully as well. The wizard in black ended up turning into this rat, saying that he was completely furious with the protagonist, and the one in white even got into a fight with him, and the one who didn't want to recognize the protagonist's value said that the classless class was the most powerful hidden class. That's why they had to carry out an additional hell level trial, and this time, he himself would be the one who would end up testing the protagonist. And if he wanted this class so badly, then the boy had better be prepared to give his life instead of getting it. And even the one in white thought that this guy's hatred for the boy was too great, and what's worse, for no reason at all. We then see the protagonist going through this portal, and there was the dark wizard again, saying that if the boy passed that last test, the test would finally come to an end, thus welcoming the boy to the occult test. The boy ended up greeting this guy with a huge smile and an innocent look, and he began to transform again, saying that the protagonist had gone far beyond his expectations, but that wasn't all, and in the final test, the boy would have to face him in a hand-to-hand -hand battle. This one had transformed into a kind of dragon, and if the boy managed to defeat it, then he would be able to complete this classless one, but it didn't seem to be that easy. The disgusted wizard didn't think twice about terrorizing the boy, and cast a skill that made the boy go into absolute defense mode, using a kind of ice shield from those giant centipedes he had defeated earlier. The dragon flew up to get more height, and used its ability to drop stones of fire from the sky, causing enormous damage to everything they touched. However, the protagonist managed to dodge these hundreds of attacks at the same time. What's more, the dragon said that fighting would only make the boy's death even worse, and he would simply be unable to do anything in the face of such immense power. Summoning his armies from the world of shadows that he had recently obtained, the proto said that this shadow mage didn't even know what true power really was, at which point the boy gave the command for his soldiers to take down the manure from before. Finally, the boy's attacks began with his archers firing their arrow into the sky, causing a shower of arrows to fall towards the dragon, but this was no problem for the dragon to dodge. Preparing a different skill this time, one of the protagonist's mages decided to counterattack, which caused the dragon to interrupt his skill at the same moment so that he could escape the attack, but it seems that this wasn't enough and one of his wings ended up being pierced by the giant's attack, but this still didn't stop him from running away, claiming that humans were stupid and he was the destroyer of worlds. Preparing his fire-breathing ability once again, he swore that everyone there would perish before his dragon flames, and finally he launched his ability, which really was able to finish off some giants with enormous ease, as if they were just a piece of paper being burned in the fire. However, the one the protagonist was standing on was running like there was no tomorrow, because there really wouldn't be one if this fire reached them, but the dragon kept saying that this was where they would be buried. In order to shut the creature's mouth, the giant threw his staff, or whatever it was he was holding, in its direction, and although the weapon came close to the dragon, it seemed to land near him instead of actually hitting him, which made the creature think that the boy had actually missed his attack. But that was exactly what the protagonist was going for, and when he was facing the colossal creature, he asked who had said that he had really missed, thus activating an ability that I didn't quite understand, and only now did the dragon realize that the prota had been thrown at that weapon that his creature had thrown earlier. It seems that things were starting to get complicated for the dark wizard, and finally, the boy decided to put an end to it once and for all by plunging his sword into the dragon, causing enormous damage as far as I could tell. This caused the creature to finally drop the ball a little and fall straight to the ground, finally being defeated once and for all, and as the final test was completed successfully, the boy managed to obtain the classless class, which I still don't know what this class did or its specialty. When he was in front of the two mages again, it was revealed that the protagonist's class was able to learn skills from all classes, which must be why it was so difficult, and it seems that the mage from before wasn't believing that he had actually lost to the boy. The man in white went on to say that there would always be someone out there capable of creating miracles, and finally he congratulated the protagonist on breaking the record, and he was the only one among thousands of awakened who had successfully achieved the classless class. The boy wasn't happy yet, and asked where the hidden rewards were, and the one in white told him to take a look, and suddenly we saw a kind of light approaching the boy, a light which, when he touched it, turned into an S-ranked item. This was the summoning badge, and it was capable of summoning targets who had previously been in the test to fight their opponents, but it was an item that could only be used once, 
and he would choose precisely the class 100 group he had previously fought. Once again, a glow was close to the protagonist. He was able to understand the hidden ability seal of the Sea of Knowledge, which protected a soul and didn't allow anyone to pass through his memories. At that moment, he remembered that Austin had the ability to read someone else's memory, and he finally had a safety measure against that, and now needed to get even more powerful quickly in order to defeat him. Returning to the human world itself, it seems that the secretary was worried, but the boy told her not to worry, because when he married her principal he would increase the girl's salary. But in her thoughts, she just said that it was really difficult to deal with her principal, even wondering if he was really capable of doing something like that. Lu Feng made a request to this young woman afterwards, asking her to bring him a hot dog at the Star River restaurant, and he would send her the address later, and she wasn't to forget to put it on her boss's account, and as she was on a diet, she wasn't spending a lot of money on dieting, so that meant she had plenty of budget for it still. It seemed that the boy had indeed had a nice meal after that, and he received a message on his cell phone from the young mage, asking why he hadn't replied to her message earlier, as well as other unnecessary things. It seemed that this young mage needed more help with her homework, and she asked him what he thought about them going to the arcade for a bit once he was free, but it seemed that wasn't going to happen, and if she was that bored, she could join him in London next week to play a real game, which would even help save the world. In the end she refused his offer, and he commented to himself that this matter was directly related to the success rate of the human race in cleansing the world of the final shadows. And looking at this photo, he said that although his older brother had died in the world of shadows, this was something that could not be undone, but the boy still promised him to get it finished once and for all. In a totally different place, we see a subway station in the city of London, and who was there was precisely our protagonist with the boy who controlled the wolf of the end of the world. And finally we see the other members of the protagonist's group as well, and it seems that young Zaya was excited, as this was the first time she had actually crossed the ocean traveling to another place in the world. The boy asked why they had to go to London, and it seemed that there was a very important matter to be resolved there, which would end up determining the future of all the Awakened Ones, and the future of the world was also at stake. To find out what the issue was that they went to solve on the other side of the world, you need to leave your like to support my work and show that you want to continue watching this story. It's always an honor and a privilege for me to have you here with me. I wish you and your family all the best. A big hug and see you next time.